Now this is high level stuff, but you're a smart crowd. Um, something called Mendelian randomization. We learn about science in different ways. We learn about it from the studies I just showed you, the hard work of the seven countries study for years, going to little communities and taking questionnaires. They actually brought the meals back from the seven countries study. They brought actual food back to Minnesota to analyze the content. These were difficult studies pre-computer. But now we're space age medicine. So Mendelium, maybe you recognize the word Mendel, and maybe you remember Gregor Mendel from your uh, genetic classes and the, the white peas and the uh, green peas, I believe. But we can now identify in databases where we have some blood samples from people, and these databases can be 500,000 people. We know there's certain genetic changes that will keep your cholesterol 10 milligrams per deciliter lower than the average American for your whole life from birth on. We know there are some genetic inheritances that make your cholesterol 10 milligrams per deciliter higher than the average American from birth forward. It's a genetic influence. It's not influenced by your diet. Your diet will have other influences, these genetic, these inherited uh, factors. So I participated, my name is Aaron Bold, uh, from a study, you can also see Kim Williams, many of you will recognize his name as a leading American plant-based cardiologist at Wayne State University. The effects of exposure to lower LDL cholesterol beginning early in life on your risk of developing heart disease. And this is using this interesting technique. You have to have a database of some genetic data and you have to know what happened to people over time. But can small changes from birth be really powerful? The implication here is, what are you feeding your kids and your teenagers? Because it, it makes a difference, but let's show you the data. So these are, I believe there's nine. These are nine genetic inheritances. We all have them, but depending which one we have, these are nine that if you inherit these from your parents, your LDL cholesterol genetically will be lower from the day you're born forward. So, you know, it does not matter, uh, and it's not something that happens in your mid-50s. It happens when you're four months and 14 months and 24 months. And it's looking at how much your cholesterol is lower than the average population just because you won the lottery and inherited this. They're not very rare. Some of us in the room got this. Some of us didn't get this, and we're frustrated our plant diets have not brought our cholesterol down, and genes do matter uh, at times. So does the diet quality and thyroid function and stress and other factors. Uh, there's this terrible plastic out there now. I don't know if anybody's mentioned the conference PFAS. PFAS, it's been in like hush puppies and 3M and it's everywhere. It's called the forever plastic because once it's in your fat tissues, it's essentially impossible to get out. Uh, the Environmental Working Group just uh, analyzed 20 studies in the United States, or 22, and I think 20 of the 22, the water supply that we're drinking has PFAS in it. That was in the last two weeks. Why do I bring that up? Because PFAS, it's in your body right now, I guarantee you, raises cholesterol. And maybe you're a plant eater and your cholesterol is not falling enough, but you're in a community that has, like we have in western Michigan around Grand Rapids, very high blood levels, very high city water levels of PFAS, because we have a giant hush puppy shoe factory that's been dumping this stuff in the water supply, apparently, allegedly, for decades and contaminating uh, the area. So the point is, genetics matter, diet's the most important. There are these other extraneous, but still important consequences. So uh, would it be cool to have a lower LDL for life? And what it says here is if you indeed inherited these favorable genetics, we looked at the odds of developing clogged arteries when you're 40, 50, 60. All those boxes are to the left of a straight line. You're lower risk. You're going to have a lower cholesterol because of genetics and you're gonna have a lower risk for heart disease. In fact, we plotted it out based on the particular spot in the genetic code. The more it lowers cholesterol, way over there on your right is a particular genetic inheritance that lowers cholesterol quite a bit on average from your genetic input, nothing to do with your diet, and the other ones less so. But if you do that, uh, the greater will be your reduced risk for heart disease. Again, the question is, does cholesterol matter? These Mendelian genetic studies show it matters, but it also takes time. So I'll give you another example. I like to 
pull things out. There's a little movement in the food world now that's gross and uh, of uncertain sanity called the carnivore diet. People that are eating three meals a day, two meals a day of meat and nothing but meat. It's quite a popular movement actually amongst uh, certain health and fitness arenas. Uh, there is a, a paper in 1930 that supports its impact on health favorably in two humans and that's the entire database, that's not a lot. Uh, and we're talking here about data from hundreds of thousands of people, and I just mentioned two. But some people say they feel better eating only meat. Well, when are they gonna show up with heart disease if that raises their cholesterol and their inflammation? It might be in a decade. This has been popular for about two years, maybe three years. There's a couple of people who've been doing it longer. And I point that out, heart disease is a slow, steady risk, like a snake just moving through the grass till it bites us, but it was there all along. Um, but it does matter a lot if you have a low cholesterol earlier in life. Again, feed your kids well, and they probably should have their cholesterol checked too. This is an interesting comparison that we did in this study. The orange boxes are how much does lowering your cholesterol lower your risk of developing a heart attack in studies that have been done, large studies with 4,000 or 10,000 or 18,000 people. The black boxes are how much does lowering your cholesterol lower your risk of a heart attack if you genetically got this bonus, this advantage. So from birth, your cholesterol has been lower than the average American, or in your 40s, 50s, 60s, you entered a research trial and your cholesterol was lowered by a drug. They both lower the risk, but the risk is much more profound if you started at birth. So you can see uh, on the left, that little black box or blue box that's way to the left, you've really dropped your risk of uh, a heart attack if you started a lower cholesterol from birth. You've lowered it if you've taken your statin medication for an appropriate reason, that being something like Lipitor, Crestor, Zocor. But it's not surprising that some of these studies aren't massively impressive when you start lowering your cholesterol at age 55, perhaps, um, because you've had the ability to develop plaque for years and years and years and years. It's much more impressive, apparently, to keep your cholesterol naturally low, like they have in Japan prior to the introduction of Western food and such. It's a very interesting comparison. And if you look at these two graphs, again, the lower arm is the results from statins, the upper kind of straight line is a result from genetically lower cholesterol. If you've had the good luck to inherit some of these determinants, and you could do 23andMe and actually find out if you have these, or you could have your whole genome measured now, reasonably cost effective, I have, to see if you've got these or not. But the impact of lowering your cholesterol from a drug is present in studies, but it's nowhere near as impressive as starting early in life, in this case, on a genetic basis. Of course, you can ask the question, what if we feed our children well from childhood on and we test them and they favorably have lower cholesterol because we've developed a low saturated fat diet for them? Does it absolutely mean it has to be a low fat diet, but a low saturated fat diet? We've kept their cheese down or none. We've got their red meats down or none. We've kept their egg yolks down or none, for example. Like some of you in the room are raising your children in a plant-based home. Uh, you might be able to reproduce that upper curve and really drop heart risk. That'd be the very hopeful news. And maybe that's slightly why the Korean veterans had more silent plaque than the Vietnamese and the Iraq uh, veterans that I showed you a while back. But it is very interesting, Mendelian. So that was our research project, but um, just recently, 2019, I think we can agree, just recently, uh, our colleagues in Europe seem to be a little more progressive than some of our colleagues in the United States, and specifically cardiologists, cholesterol experts, uh, ESC, European Society of Cardiology, EAS is the European Atherosclerosis Society. They put together some recommendations, um, and they're meaningful in this debate. Cholesterol matters, or you can go to the bookstore today and buy books called The Great Cholesterol Myth by a cardiologist who is selling his marinara and olive oil sauce right on the table over there. I like the guy, but I don't like his approach to cholesterol and heart disease. I, as an individual, he's a very fine man. You can go look at that later if you like. 
So this is from the European Atherosclerosis Society. This is 2019. This is about as up to date as it gets. And just read the top line. If somebody gives you grief because you've said, I've chosen to eat this way because it's helped me lower my cholesterol and I want to stay healthy and avoid disease. And they say, well, cholesterol doesn't matter. Didn't you read the National Enquirer? You can read the first line. Scientists don't debate this. I mean, and scientists go back to Ansel Keys, and they come all the way forward to Mendelian studies and other studies. High LDL cholesterol causes atherosclerosis. And this is actually data from not just the uh, Mendelian randomization study I showed you that I was a member of at Wayne State University, but this is a number of them in uh, follow-up joined together. But if you look at that, um, there is you know, 194,000 uh, people in one study, you know, 400,000 in another, 196,000 if my eyes are working in a third. And we have two people on the carnivore diet. I mean, numbers don't always matter a lot. You know, you don't need a lot of people in a study of how powerful parachutes are when you jump out of a plane. You might need two and you're done. But for something subtle in human physiology, numbers do matter. And the basic trend here is from these Mendelian studies is uh, if you inherit these genes that lower your LDL from birth, you're very much favorably uh, less likely to develop heart disease uh, decades later. Um, I can't tell you how to change your genes, but again, the message is at any phase in life, design a diet that lowers your cholesterol to healthy levels. Some of us will respond more than others because of differences in our liver. Metabolism, some of us will respond more than others because of these influences, genetic influences. Some of you will be frustrated, and again, question I get all the time, uh, emails I get, why is my cholesterol not 120 like I've seen in a Dr. Esselstyn lecture or a Dr. Ornish research publication, and I'm doing it, and you know, it's a complex situation, but try, and uh, I'm not uh, anti-medication if needed.